Have you ever been the type to want to cook a delectable five course meal and be one of the greatest chefs in existence? Well Delicious and Dungeon won't help you too much in that aspect. It'll only teach you very basic cooking knowledge, but regardless, it'll sure make you want to taste some of its food. Besides, this show is pretty cool. Delicious and Dungeon, or as I just like to call it, Delicious Dungeon, it rolls off the tongue better by removing that dumb inn in the middle. It starts with an old man coming out a part of the catacombs, saying he was the king of the golden country that fell thousands of years ago, that's been sealed away underground by a mad mage, and whoever defeats the mage deserves to be able to rule the kingdom. So it then sets up a challenge for many adventurers that dare go down the depths of the dungeon, infested by monsters that get more dangerous the lower any adventurer goes. And that's where the main crew come in, Lyos, Fallon, Marsil, and Chilchuk, then some others we don't have to worry about too much. But the deeper they got in the dungeon, they encountered a red dragon that was absolutely decimating them all. As Fallon got caught on the clutches of the dragon's mouth and teleported the team away back to the outside of the dungeon, above ground. And the other party members I said not to worry about leaves the group for their own sakes. So the basis of the story is that the remaining team must go back in the dungeon to rescue Fallon before she gets digested. Then this is where the whole food concept comes in. After the incident with the dragon, the team doesn't have much time, but also no money, as they already used up all their rations getting to where the dragon was. But to counter this, Lyos comes up with the great idea of eating the monsters they come across instead. The only problem is that not one of them have the right amount of knowledge and expertise to cook up a decent meal of monsters. Even Lyos, who is a monster lover, who likes to study and examine all types of monsters just out of curiosity alone. But this is where their new companion and best friend comes in, Senshi. Someone who has a whole 10 years of experience cooking up monsters in the dungeon. So with this, they begin their journey of rescuing Fallon, Lyos's sister, and Senshi just wants to cook up a dragon. I like the simple approach this story takes. It doesn't try to overcomplicate things. It's not trying to do something grand that will blow your mind with plot twists at every turn. It's just an adventure going deep into a dungeon with an objective in mind, while stumbling across various foes that may block their path. But that's all it has to be. Plots that keep stuff simple can be entertaining enough. I also enjoy how each member of the party is a different species. It gives it more of a variety. Lyos is a human or tall man, as the fantasy world likes to call it. He's pretty much the leader of the group, if there were one. He tends to have quick thinking, given a situation, but he can also get a little too weirdly infatuated with monsters, especially when it comes to eating them. If there is a will, he will try and eat any monster he can, even if it comes to armor. Then there's Chilchuk, the halfling, or Halffoot, who is weak but is good with the technical stuff, such as lockpicking or disarming traps and such. He can easily get agitated or annoyed whenever any member of the team treats him like a kid, but he's actually a 28 year old man. It's just the way Halffoot's age. He's also voiced by Casey Mondulo in the English dub, which I enjoy. I made a whole segment about them in my video about dubs, so it was nice to see them here. Chilchuk fits their voice really well. There's Marcel the elf, that is the mage of the team, which is the one who is the most against eating monsters because they are a little dummy and wants to eat proper normal everyday food. But the more she forces herself to eat, the easier it is for her to get used to. But she gets through it because she wants to help the best she can, even if it means getting in the way and causing even more problems. But she still has her moments to shine. And lastly, Senshi the dwarf, who carries the entire team through the dungeon by keeping everyone alive cooking the most tastiest monster meals he comes up with. While watching, the more meals that were being made, the more I wanted to eat them. They looked good. Even as someone who doesn't eat meat personally, I still want to try some of this monster food. The team eats stuff such as sorbet they get from beating up ghosts with a jar of holy water, getting the ghosts frost onto the jar for it to make sorbet. I don't know the technicalities of how this works, I just think it looks good and I want to eat some. They make a tart out of a dangerous living plant. 
Then these neat jewel and coin bugs sent she cooks up that look fun, and you eat some of them like crisps. They also cook whatever the hell this little sheep tomato thing is, but I'm curious, so I want to eat it. I do enjoy how they incorporate monsters into food. It feels like it makes sense for a fantasy anime to do this. It's a neat idea. I'm sure there are other anime that do stuff just like this, but Delicious Dungeon expands on the idea a whole lot more. And it's interesting to see what types of monsters the group will cook the lower and lower they go down each floor. Talking about the certain floors of the dungeon they explore, they're all varied in a certain way. As it began, you first see them step into the dungeon, it looked quite generic and I assumed it wouldn't be too different from there. But only in just a small amount of time, it completely changes as the team advances to the second floor. The scenery suddenly switches to a forest with a bunch of bridges tied to several tall trees. It very much seems that they're outside, but they're still in the dungeon, it's real cool. And the dungeon continuously changes the more it goes down. There's a level filled with water, there's one where it's the Golden Country's castle town, and then a floor where it's covered in snow. I love the differences it makes to keep a dungeon appealing and fascinating. It makes the adventure feel much grander. There are also many instances where the party would end up at a roadblock due to some monster or magic type stuff and many of the situations are so creative. There's a part where the group encounters some shapeshifters that shift into each member of the party and Lyos decides that he will be the one to find out who is real and who is fake and it has some moments that are quite humorous or a time when they all transformed into completely different species and it's nice to see all the new different designs the characters have in their new form like seeing Lyos as a dwarf or Chilchuck as a tall man. There are several others that keep the series engaging to watch. It had me curious to see what they may come across next. But something else I tend to think of and was fascinated about is that Delicious Dungeon reminds me of such games as Dungeons and Dragons in the way everything is formatted and laid out. It's a simple quest, every member is a different species and each one have their own trait. There are just little stuff such as that that very much remind me of the game. So honestly, if you are into D&D, then you may find quite a bit of enjoyment out of Delicious Dungeon. From all the praise I've been given this series, it's definitely not perfect. Some of the episodes aren't the greatest and slows the pacing down a bit. The gimmick where characters can come back to life I wasn't fully hooked on. I've never liked the idea of characters being able to come back from death. It makes a lot of fights a lot less tense when you just know the characters can come back. But to be fair, Delicious Dungeon didn't bother me too much since it doesn't take itself too seriously in the first place and it also at least establishes itself at the very start that characters can very much come back alive unlike other anime that do it much worse. <coughs> so it doesn't get a complete pass but it does handle it a lot better than a bunch of other anime. But even still, I didn't expect to enjoy Delicious Dungeon as much as I did. I came across it as many were discussing on it, so I decided to check it out, and I expected it to just be an average fantasy anime, and nothing much more than that. But I was surprisingly entertained and immersed into this whole dungeon it set up for the story. I thought it was neat that most of the anime is all taking place in just this dungeon, and it never gets boring. So I was glad that Delicious Dungeon was as good as it was, and I hope the series continues to be consistently entertaining till the end. Since it's already announced the second season, I very much have high hopes for.